All right. I'd like to talk to you for a moment about case studies and purpose of sampling. Here the idea is not to capture the population. It's not the same thing as doing a stratified sample where you're trying to capture um, the views of African Americans, indigenous populations, women and everybody accurately uh, by either oversampling or having a certain number of each group as in a stratified sample. Purpose of sampling is quite different. Um, this is part of case-oriented research, which like you will see when we go on to discuss participant observation uh, or in uh, historical comparative analysis, focuses in on a couple of cases to really capture the various aspects of a particular societal phenomenon. So here you can see that the research delves into studying uh, one or more cases to obtain detail and in-depth information. Uh, this is very different than the, than the variable-oriented research uh, which we've been discussing. Variable-oriented research is most often quantitative, while case-oriented research is often qualitative or mixed methods. So the variable-oriented research is seeking to examine relationships between or among variables. It creates formal hypotheses. It uses statistical testing methods such as ANOVA or regression. And here what we're going to be focused on are case, is case-oriented research. And that's going to use purposive sampling. In other words, the sampling is not random at all. The cases are deliberately selected based on the salient features of a case, something you would not want to do if you want to establish relationships between variables, because there you are not selecting the cases individually. You want the random selection generally. And so it's critical for anybody doing this type of research to explain why their cases are selected. They have to have a clear understanding of why, which means, again, that random selection is not the way to go if you're doing a case study. Uh, so you can select this for various reasons, and the case can be at different levels of analysis. You could select a country, an institution, a community, um, a people, uh, a particular gang, if you're looking at uh, gang life or something, you can select at various levels of analysis, uh, but generally you're not going to select a single individual because this is not psychological research. If it were psychological research, you might select somebody that typified a particular form of abnormal psychology. But in sociology, you're going to select something at a more aggregated level of analysis. Um, so, for example, a person interested in gang violence could interview members of one or two gangs. Uh, a person who wants to understand uh, historical processes such as revolutions may look at particular countries that have experienced those revolutions. Or uh, if you want to understand working conditions, in export processing zones, you might select a couple of uh, factories in an export processing zone in Honduras or El Salvador or China or something like that. Now, uh, you may also take into consideration, depending on your method of choice to research this particular case, the facility with which you have the ability to address this problem. Do you have access to the data? Can you visit this place? Can you get into it? Uh, can you access um, those people? Are there gatekeepers that you know that can let you in if you're doing participant observation? Can you get access to the data? Those questions are pertinent, even though uh, they might not be the type of question that makes uh, your case more interesting, it does make it logistically feasible, and that is an important consideration. 
Also, you can select a case because it is a typical case. Uh, I know that sounds strange because generally you think about selecting cases that are outliers or that are not like the rest. But you can also select cases uh, to get an in-depth look at something that you see as a wide or general or sorry generalizable process. So, for example, Matthew Desmond, who you'll hear from uh, in when we discuss participant observation, uh, selected the case of Milwaukee to look at the process of eviction. He didn't select Milwaukee because it had the highest levels of eviction in the country and wanted to see why is Milwaukee different. He selected Milwaukee because he viewed Milwaukee as a fairly typical uh, example of what is happening across the rest of the country and thus went in depth in the case study to see what was happening in the lives of the people who were evicted. What happened to them after eviction? What led up to their eviction? All of that was part of the case that he, uh, or the cases that he examined. And even there he followed a, a set of families. He wasn't trying to uh, do quantitative research across the entire spectrum, although he did that in addition to his cases that he uh, was studying. So you can ask yourself, is it a quintessential example of an important phenomena? Is it similar to other cases in many respects? So there we select the case because it's typical. Or we can select the case because it's an extreme example of a phenomenon. And thus, uh, this may allow us to understand the dynamics that surround the extreme values of the case. Finally, we can select a case because we think it's important. Uh, a person can choose, a researcher may choose a case uh, because it's seen as being exceptionally powerful and having critical importance uh, to the particular issue that they're examining. And so there uh, we see that the criteria defining importance will change and depends on the research question. It's sometimes challenging to present uh, information on, on methods simply because uh, this is so process focused as opposed to content focused. Most courses that you'll take in sociology will be content focused. This and other methods classes are the only uh, types of courses you take in the social sciences that are really process focused. So I just wanted to mention that. So here you can see uh, that if I wanted to study a company that had a prominent role in the military industrial complex, I might select say Lockheed Martin or Northrop Grumman or something because those companies are central. And, and here I present information as to why it's central. I mean, in 2016, Lockheed Martin received over 66,000 war contracts that totaled over uh, $29 billion. Uh, that's a pretty important, um, you know, section of the military industrial complex. It's, and so if I want to understand it, understanding Lockheed Martin might help me understand, you know, uh, what are the connections between uh, the military industrial producers and uh, Congress, and money that's allocated, public monies that are allocated for this, etc. Uh, I could also select a deviant case, something that, that is selected simply because it's an outlier. It's different than what we would expect uh, given a known relationship. And so if, for instance, I see that there is a relationship between gross domestic product and uh, per capita and health outcomes. Uh, if I see a country which is really poor but does exceptionally well in health outcomes, I might be interested as to find out as to why. Uh, so anyway, this is a form of looking at anomalies and that can help yield uh, useful policy recommendations sometimes. Sometimes it will not. So, for example, here is uh, a, uh, actually it's a regression line of the child mor mortality rate and gross domestic product per capita for 131 countries uh, that comes from Randall Kuhn. 
and you can see that there are several outliers that have been named. Each of those outliers could be interesting for cases for selection for a study. Uh, the ones on the bottom because they're doing better than expected and the ones on the top because they're doing worse uh, than the overall wealth of the society would predict. So cases can also uh, be selected to compare and contrast outcomes. Uh, for example, uh, if we know that cases are similar on certain processes but the outcomes are different, we might want to see why or what is it in what is it that makes them uh, different. So for example, Zuberi's work uh, look contrasted the conditions in, in four different hotels to examine what happened, what was the impact of, of countries' policy and union experience. And he looked at hotels in in Canada and hotels in the United States. He had two in each. And he looked at hotels in Canada that were unionized and one that was not unionized and a hotel in the United States that was unionized and another hotel that wasn't. And what he found was that the working conditions were the best in the unionized hotels, but particularly in the Canadian unionized hotels. So uh, the union uh, presence did improve uh, the conditions, but due to Canada's stronger labor laws, even the non-union hotel in Canada was better off than, say, the non-union hotel in the United States. So, in a sense, that allowed Zubery to examine uh, the impact of unionization and national policy on working conditions. Another uh, thing that people can use, or another criteria uh, that individuals or researchers can use, uh, to select cases can be past experience. So some cases are selected because the research has a personal experience in a particular field or with a particular case, and that can, you know, assist with being familiar, having a way in, you know people, uh, but it can also have a disadvantage in terms of uh, bias, and you don't have the, you're not a fresh pair of eyes that that looks at that so you may have some challenges uh, with maintaining objectivity so uh, that's all for today thank you very much